Good afternoon. I want to begin today by acknowledging the Gadigal people of the Eunora Nation, the traditional custodians of the land of which I am on today. I would also like to pay my respects to their elders past, present and emerging. I extend that respect to Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people here today. So the title of my presentation today is Divergent Conservation, Cultural Sector Opportunities and Challenges Relating to the Development of Time-Based Art Conservation in Australasia. The Art Museum is in a moment of transition, driven by cultural changes in the present day, which are more and more mediated by electronic technology. The exponential growth of technological capabilities, the instant gratification of connectivity, a reliance on external devices as an extension of the human body, and a desire for immersive experiences. Artist practices, artworks, and art audiences are also changing, both as a reflection of and in reaction to these societal shifts, providing an incentive for art museums to move beyond traditional media. New media entering art museums now includes interactive software artworks, kinetic sculpture, augmented reality, and virtual reality. Joan Ross's 2019 artwork, Did You Ask the River?, commissioned by the Mordaunt family for the Australian Centre of the Moving Image, ACME, in Melbourne, and subsequently featured at the 2019 installation Contemporary as part of Sydney Contemporary held at Carriage Works, explores colonisation through a third-person narrative, creating a virtual world in which the audience must participate in the destruction of nature through handheld devices. Then there's Simon Denny's Mine, presented in 2019 at the Museum of Old and New Art, Mona, in Tasmania, which takes an alternative approach by placing new media in the hands of the audience. Mine explores data mining through an augmented reality board game, which is controlled via Mona's O device, allowing visitors to participate using in-app notifications. Playing what has been described as a monopoly on steroids for the anthropocene, visitors can virtually move through and explore mine, all while their data is being mined and extracted via their iPhones. Then there's also the use of digital interactive technologies within an exhibition, which often supports an audience's experience of non-digital media or traditional artworks. And that is becoming more and more prevalent within, um, within presentations in museums, galleries, and across the glam sector. A recent example is seen here at the Art Gallery of New South Wales for their 2019 exhibition, Japan Supernatural, where the institution collaborated with Sydney-based company S1T2 to create a software-based interactive touch wall of Hirohoya's Itaya's six metre long narrative hand scroll, Night Procession of the Hundred Demons. In 2019, Art News reported that the entirely digital museum, Team Lab Borderless, had gained the title of most visited single artist museum of the year, beating attendance rec records of classic favourites such as Van Gogh, Salvador Dali, and Picasso museums. The Art News article noted that the technological dependent nature of the collective's work had been greeted by a mix of scepticism from the art world and a boundless enthusiasm from artists and the general public. This comment demonstrates that while audiences and artists are enthusiastically engaged in the new aesthetics of interactive art, such works do not necessarily fit within institutional expectations, practices and policies developed for traditional artworks. So faced with the need to adapt, institutions around the world are searching for new collection management and conservation methodologies, which can encompass and care for the complex and variable needs of these new kinds of artworks. The research discussed in this presentation brings new data to discussions around the development and implementation of time-based art conservation practices in Australasia. The term time-based art is used to encompass digital, 
works um, and durational works. So works that have duration as an inherent element of um, an, inherent, an inherent property. So um, such as audiovisual uh, heritage, sound-based artworks, performance, kinetic, interactive-based works. So as part of this research, I set out to gather data on the current state of awareness and understanding of time-based art or TBA in the Australasian arts sector and to investigate the impact of the viewpoints and assumptions of professionals who work in the cultural heritage sector on the development of these practices. An online survey titled Time-Based Art, Cultural Heritage Sector, Knowledge and Awareness was used to explore themes and issues which had emerged through my experience as a time-based art conservator working in Australia. The survey received 140 responses from professionals within the cultural heritage sector with 127 respondents indicating that they currently worked in the glam sector. The respondents range of industry experience was between zero to 20 years. The two largest groups were between five and 10 years and then 20 plus. Survey respondents noted uh, a broad range of experience across cultural sector groups. The largest sector with 65 respondents indicated that they had worked or they do work in a gallery environment. However, acknowledging that many professionals within the sector have a range of experience across multiple areas. One of the tables on this slide presents primary, um, respondents' primary areas of experience. So the highest level noted was conservation and preservation specialists with 56 respondents. The second largest group are those who identified themselves as technical specialists, which included operations support, information technology, electrical, audiovisual, lighting and installation specialists. Archivists represented a small portion of respondents as well. The category of other included information specialists. And then you see there's also um, library and university, a small representation um, of those who work within those sectors. The survey also received responses from professionals whose role complemented collection roles within institutions, such as design, education, audience programming, human resources, and grant and philanthropic roles. The survey demonstrated a growing awareness of TBA collection management practices in the region, which respondents primarily attributed to dedicated symposia workshops and national conferences, international and national networks and institutional advocacy. Survey respondents who ident identified as students from the Grim Grimwayne Centre for Cultural Materials Conservation said that their awareness of TBA conservation was primarily due to the subject display and documentation, which was taught in collaboration with ACME and Patricia Falico, who is a senior time-based media conservator at the Tate in the United Kingdom. A recent symposium and workshop titled Towards a Flexible Future, which was designed and hosted by Art Gallery of New South Wales with collaborators from Tate in June 2019, highlighted the internal institutional advocacy and subsequent ability to facilitate institutional knowledge sharing across a range of GLAM sectors. With delegates representing 15 major cultural institutions from across Australia, New Zealand and Hong Kong, the workshop brought curatorial, registration, conservation and collection management perspectives to the challenges of caring for digital objects and technologies in public collections. This event represented the largest gathering in Australasia to date of professionals from within the sector who were dedicated to the care, management and future of time-based artworks and collections. The formation of professional networks and international associations also appeared to be one of the most effective means of connecting specialists and of promoting advocacy and the development of TBA conservation practices within the sector. So jumping into the data, in response to the question, what are the key influences impacting the change of time-based art collecting practices in Australia and New Zealand? Respondents noted an increase in collection growth in this area. This growth can be attributed to cultural factors, 
such as a strong new media art culture and contemporary art. And one, as one respondent noted, artists doing new things and art museums responding. One respondent particularly noted this cultural shift in curatorial practice as observing that there is a gradual willingness to go beyond traditional media on the part of curators. A development which another respondent attributes to the proliferation of TBA being created and its increased recognition and acceptance by collection institutions. Also discussed in the, in the comments was a shift in audience expectation with one respondent observing that TBA has challenged how visitors understand and engage with art. Often, TBA works have become the focal point of an exhibition. Economic factors outlined by respondents included more time-based art being valued and hence collect considered a collecting object. Respondents also noted broader societal shifts through the mass rollout of broadband, and the consumption of media by streaming services, as well as fast-paced changes in technology more generally, had changed how audiences seek to engage with media artworks and art experiences generally. Additionally, Survey respondents were asked to provide a positive, neutral or negative response to the question, what kind of impact has the acquisition of TBA within your organisation had on your role? While there was some ambivalence in the findings, the open-ended questions provided greater insight. So I had some, have some examples listed here on the slide, which um, sort of range from the positive to um, sort of the more negative perceptions. Think, um, such as it brings variety and new challenges, that it's interesting and challenging because it keeps, um, as an electrician, it keeps me on my toes and thinking outside of the box. One respondent noted that there was sort of an inherent conflict um, around the acquisition and collection of time-based artworks in that it had increased their workload and the complexity of their workload, but it also provided opportunity to undertake professional development and learning opportunities. On the other hand, one respondent noted that the, a lack of understanding of how to manage all aspects of it means that it's time con consuming when compared to traditional art. When asked the question, do you believe Australian and New Zealand institutions are currently meeting best practice, stand, best practice standards when preserving TBA, 83% of survey respondents felt that cultural institutions were not current, currently meeting these best practice standards. However, on reflection, I think that there was something sort of a little bit wrong with the way that I had posed this question. And I went back and reflected on that because I think it's important to acknowledge underlying best practice, collection management and conservation principles, and that they're often captured through universal codes of practice, such as international charters and conventions, and then implemented through national standards and guidelines. And this is a requirement of our professional practice. But really the definition of this, of best practice, is problematic and I think one of the reasons is this is due to the rapid pace of technological developments, a lack of precedent in established standards, particularly in the field of digital preservation and an ethical shift away from the preservation of a physical object to one that embraces a more variable, changeable and malleable nature of an artwork or a digital heritage object. As one respondent noted, there is still some confusion as to what constitutes best practice, given that TBA covers most traditional material disciplines. So each discipline is in essence trying to develop its own approach. Given the resources involved and the emerging na nature of some of newer TBA objects, best practice will always be a questionable aim. In response to the question, in your opinion, what are the biggest roadblocks affecting the institutional management of TBA? 
respondents' data identified multiple factors. These included time-based art not being identified as an institutional priority, changes relating to managerial support and institutional advocacy, a lack of specialist skills within an organisation, and an overall lack of understanding of the key issues related to the management of TBA works. 55% of respondents felt that the key issues relating to TBA collections and preservation are not currently identified as an institutional priority, in that proper procedures are not currently put in place for managing them. One respondent noted, the collecting of TBA works by a public institution necessitates the implementation of a conservation strategy to keep the work viable into the future. And as another respondent explained, Currently, museums are not adequately resourced to deal with existing collections of time-based art, that is to fully document and future-proof the works. So as artists explore and push the boundaries of the medium and te technology improves and expands, museums get further behind. It was noted that respondents were hesitant to talk about positive progress in the sector without also noting potential obstacles. Examples included noting a greater awareness of and future planning to achieve best practice standards. However, existing workload volumes, resourcings, resourcing and infrastructure within institutions were often seen as a limitation. And that organizational change required to ensure the needs of these works are, are met require very different processes and resourcing changes. One respondent noted that TBA conservation is still in the early days, but it seems that institutions are on the edge of solidifying sound practices. While another respondent felt that we are moving towards better practices as TBA becomes better understood. However, I just don't think we're there yet. As one respondent explains, this is a very complex, nuanced and multifaceted area of conservation and one which is just only really beginning to emerge in Australia. In addition to the data presented, respondents also identified several, several supplementary issues. These included a limited, limited budget and resources. So surrounding the lack of understanding of institutional requirements to collect, manage and preserve TBA works, Respondents felt that a contributing factor was a general lack of funding or recognition of accurate costs re required to collect and preserve TBA collections. As one respondent stated, even with executive acknowledgement of the needs, there is just no money available. However, as many of these works are held in public, publicly funded cultural institutions, Budgetary limitations are always going to be a factor when developing new collection management and conservation areas. The general complex nature of TBA was another issue identified, um, as well as the requirement for supporting a supporting infrastructure needed to ensure that, that they can be managed and preserved. So in this case, I think it's really hitting on a digital preservation storage systems and the requirement for active long-term preservation um, through a digital collection store in that is kind of in line with what we currently do for our physical collections. On that point, one respondent noted that there was a false conception that TBA is easier than traditional, than traditional forms of art to care for noting that there uh, is a reluctance to treat TBA as real art, or alternatively, it's often seen that TBA is just disposable. And in the case of digital files, it's just as easy to get the artist to give you another copy. So these examples allude to a broader institutional shift required that, um, that this mindset shift is, is really essential when working with working with TBA in that you're not trying to compare it to a traditional medium. As one respondent noted, general attitudes to audiovisual and time-based art in cultural institutions have not been able to acknowledge that these 
items are worthy of conservation and preservation attention until it's realised that the works are becoming increasingly inaccessible. I feel like people have stuck their heads in the sand about audiovisual and time-based art objects quite a bit and still are to a certain extent. Another noted um, supplementary obstacle was working with artists as, a, artists as a primary stakeholder for both the display and preservation of the work. Respondents noted that artists did not always have a full technical understanding of their work, which often led to complexities for staff when artists wanted to portray their work in a certain way that is actually technological, technologically challenging. And in the cases of, duplicate, of wanting to duplicate, restore and change artworks at a later date, which, you know, isn't necessarily um, as easy to achieve with a traditional art object such as a painting. Respondents also noted the challenges in getting the documentation and information from artists to support long-term management and preservation of their work, and that the confusion around decision-making approaches to the conservation of obsolete technology and formats, especially when the artist is no longer alive or, or available to discuss alternatives to preserve the artworks. I've experienced this firsthand um, during attempts to preserve software-based artworks in that um, eventually you're going to need to migrate or emulate a software-based artwork. And to achieve that, you really do need an object and source code. In my attempts um, to work with artists and artist studios, it's been really difficult to be able to to advocate for the need for that kind of supplementary documentation and then have an artist, you know, have the technical ability to extract that and then, um, and then sort of find the correct means to store and preserve. Um, so that's sort of a real challenging area, I think, um, specifically within time-based art conservation at the moment. They, um, respondents also noted a knowledge and skill gap between technical skills and collection management practices. So this was really, really interesting as respondents identified a lack of development, co developed collection management processes, workflows and institutional priorities as a contributing factor to roadblocks and the effective institutional management of TBA. One respondent noted that the changes in art practice had not been matched by changes in collection management practice, but also noted really was a lack of technical knowledge from conservation, registration and curatorial areas and a lack of understanding of requirements from technicians and artists. One respondent felt that there was a tendency to focus overly on policy and less on the practical efficient methods and decisions and expertise of other professions and trades that don't fall into collection management areas. So in my experience and from what the data I could gather from the research, this opinion really relates to a perceived knowledge and skill gap between institutional colleagues um, specifically around those with more technical trade skills and those who come from a collection management um, background. And so I've experienced that um, when these situations arise, there is the potential to contribute to miscommunication and siloed approaches if a balance of knowledge, collaboration, and a common language across these two specialist areas cannot be found. And that really relates to the last point um, around advocacy. So the challenge of successfully advocating for better TBA collection management and conservation standards was highlighted as an issue repeatedly. One respondent described the challenges of advocating for, for TBA to their institution's benefaction group. Noting its divergence from traditional conservation fields like paintings and objects and textiles means it can be challenging for benefactors to understand how important it is to conserve these works. Being technology-based, it's difficult for benefactors to see 
the conservation progress and their direct and their direct impact and support has had instead of the restoration of a painting where you would go in and a benefactor could see what was happening in front in front of their eyes so i thought that this was a really interesting response especially when related to funding and budgetary limitations so and sort of noting i guess the ability to effectively communicate the risks and approaches for time-based art, the way you advocate for it within your institution may have a direct impact on an individual or an organization's ability to break down departmental silos, gain support, and then address funding and budgetary issues. Relevant to the Australasian situation, Patterns around the establishment of cross institutional teams and dedicated projects and the creation of temporary roles as pilots for the establishment of permanent roles are emerging. A primary example of this is the Art Gallery of New South Wales time based art project, which began in 2015 and included staff from departments across the gallery, including curatorial, conservation, registration, archives and library and systems management. While this project was instrumental in the creation of a permanent time-based art conservation position at AGNSW, AGNSW in 2018, the first of its kind in Australasia, continual input from the cross-disciplinary project team was required to address the larger and ongoing institutional shift in how TBA works were understood and managed across the gallery. In 2019, ACME was the second institution in Australia to create a permanent role in TBA conservation after advocating and building institutional support for the role through overlapping digitization and preservation contract positions for a number of years. In 2020, an institutional wide relocation and digitization project enabled the Museum of Applied Arts and Sciences, MAS, to employ dedicated project staff including a conservation and registration position, position to focus on the management of Maz's time-based art collections. And in 2021, the National Gallery of Australia advertised and filled a permanent junior conservation role in time-based and kinetic art. A reoccurring issue expressed throughout the survey was a lack of specialist skills to support the display and preservation of time-based artworks. 63% of respondents identified a lack of specialist skills within their organisation as one of the biggest issues impacting their management of time-based artworks. One respondent commented that there are entire collections becoming lost due to the lack of expertise and a fear of intervention. So as just previously mentioned, a cross-disciplinary approach can be needed for the implementation of TBA collection management practices across an institution. However, 93.3% of survey respondents still agreed that there remains a need for the establishment of specialist conservation roles within the cultural heritage sector to ensure the appropriate care and management of time-based artworks and digital heritage. On the other hand, Respondents also argued that institutions need to be pragmatic when dedicating resources to specific collections, as some collections are not large enough to dedicate ongoing resources to. The development of training in time-based art conservation has seen limited growth, even internationally. Without dedicated resources and courses, Conservators working in time-based art generally need to undertake traditional conservation courses first, followed by significant independent research, museum fellowships under experienced conservators, and or film and sound and digital preservation archival training. There are currently no specialised training programs for time-based art conservation in Australia. However, as previously described, the Grimwade Centre for Cultural Materials Conservation offers an elective subject, display and documentation, which focuses on the development of interdisciplinary skills and approaches to the documentation of complex material, which does include time-based and digital art. 
In line with our international counterparts, Australian conservators looking to specialise in time-based art are required to pursue a path of independent research and learning, beginning with traditional materials-based training. In a related audiovisual field, individuals may also choose to undertake online study at uh, Charles Sturt University, which often offers a graduate certificate in audiovisual archiving and the subject, a subject in digital preservation. In order to establish the sector's thoughts on the required skill sets for a TBA conservator, survey participants were asked, what skill sets do you identify as the most important to the position of conservator of time-based art? The data shows that respondents felt that an in-depth knowledge of the technical requirements and specifications for TBA was the most important requirement. This was followed by an advance under advanced knowledge of digital preservation systems and infrastructure. The requirement of a TBA conservator to develop policies, procedures and protocols to support rapidly changing artworks and technologies was also ranked as important and demonstrated that digital literacy, language and policy to support practice is viewed highly when determining required skills and knowledge. Collaboration and communication skills were ranked fourth and fifth, which showed that an ability to clearly articulate the needs for, of the collection and work as part as a team was considered a high priority for the role. Practical skills, such as an experience with a range of technologies, equipment and playback media, as well as the capacity to lead an installation team and maintain works during a display period were not considered as essential. Respondents did not feel that TBA conservators needed to have an advanced understanding of end user IT or collection management data database software skills as a requirement of the role. Interestingly, while 88.5% of respondents agreed that there was a need for formalized conservation training in Australia in time-based art, the skills specific to traditional conservation training such as an advanced understanding of conservation philosophy and tertiary qualifications in materials conservation were ranked seven and nine out of 10 respectively. While the focus of this research was centered around time-based artworks, there is an undeniably strong links and crossovers to the information and library management sector. Of the 140 respondents, 88 identified as having a further specialization within their field of primary experience, such as digital preservation officer, digitization manager, head of digital, audiovisual conservator, film curator, librarian, archivist, and immersive new media researcher. Respondents working in these fields identified a greater awareness of the challenges related to the conservation and management of audiovisual and born digital heritage, especially in the areas of digitization, digital preservation and long-term digital storage infrastructure. Respondents working in the information management sector noted the similarities between TBA conservation in terms of the challenges related to digital preservation and active intervention required to preserve digital heritage. So this left me wondering, as someone who's worked across both libraries and archives and then galleries and museums, why we don't collaborate and share our knowledge and experiences more across these two um, linked specialisations. It was noted in the survey that global connectivity via online platforms such as Twitter and Facebook allowed professionals across these differing sectors to share ideas, resources, ask questions, and debate ethics with each other. In the field of TBA conservation, online connectivity to wider library and archives, digital preservation and records management groups, such as the network IPRES and the, and the National Community for Digital Preservation Practices in Australia, Australasia Preserves, was considered essential to keeping abreast of developments in the field. Another notable example of a collaborative cross-institutional project that seeks to combine knowledge and resources across the library, 
university, museum and art sectors include the Australian Research Council funded projects, Archiving Australia, Australian art, Media Arts towards a method and national collection and Play It Again, Preserving Australian Video Game History. These ARC projects support media art collections and are examples of building sustainable networks for professionals who care for them across the glam sector. And clearly, the invitation for me to speak at this event is another such exa example of successful interdisciplinary knowledge sharing. In conclusion, there will always be new objects which enter into our collective heritage space and present previously unanticipated conservation challenges. As one survey respondent explained, when providing their thoughts on upskilling conservation professionals in time-based art conservation, to me, this is a generational change and it's going to take time to develop up individuals and roles within organisations. We're going to need both collaboration and succession planning. The development of skills to support the field of TBA conservation internationally has expanded significantly in the last two decades. And there is now a greater global awareness of the technical challenges required to preserve time-based artworks. Moreover, the work undertaken by international cultural heritage institutions to identify collection management and preservation gaps within conservation and museological frameworks has in many cases been successful in advocating for the development of specialist conservation roles for time-based art. Until recently, however, the development of specialised conservation roles in the Australian conservation sector has only played a minor role in these developments. It is, however, essential for the future of the Australasian conservation profession to embrace the technological shifts of the 21st century for the sake of our digital and time-based art cultural heritage. Lastly, I'd just like to acknowledge Thank you very much for your time today.